Welcome to Weld.com. We recently had a, uh, I picked up on a viewer comment and it was something, I believe it was on one of the pipe welding demos. I can't remember where it was, but the viewer wanted to see something with 532, 6013. I believe it was a fillet weld. Um, a couple of things here. It's, it's a fairly simple weld. It's a really fun weld. Um, 6013 is one of the electrodes that we use a lot in training. It's, it's easy to run. It's smooth, it doesn't penetrate uh, a whole lot. It is uh, a very dense slag. We do a lot of multiple pass welds. It's a real easy restrike in that uh, if some of you that's run low hydrogen electrodes, if you stop and you go back to restart, it seems like there's a, a button of glass that goes around the end there and you gotta beat it to death. I usually just take and, and tap them or hit them with a file or something to get that off of there. This particular rod, the, uh, the coating, I believe, has uh, some titania, not titanium, titania in it, and uh, it tends to restrike. It's almost like running a, an iron powder rod, like a 7014, uh, not, yeah, 7014 and 7024 are common electrodes that have the high iron powder in them. We kind of consider this to be the one of the fill freeze type electrodes. The unique thing about a 6013 is it runs in it runs on any polarity. Uh, it's real good for using on an AC machine. Uh, those of you that have a buzz box, the the cracker box, inexpensive stick machines, you can weld with this nicely. Um, you can run it on straight polarity or electrode negative. Uh, it's a little faster deposition. It's run, it's, you can use it on some sheet metal. I wouldn't use 532nd on sheet metal, but uh, we can use the eighth inch and 332nd on some lighter gauge. You can run it downhill fairly quick. Uh, a lot of lead angle and hot and try to stay a, ahead of this fluid weld pool. You can do that. It, it leaves a soft, smooth, rounded bead. So it's kind of nice in that respect. Again, I use it a lot here at the college in training people that just starting out with stick welding because it's easy to run. Now, <clears throat> yeah, having said that, there are some things that can happen with it because the flux is so fluid, the weld pool, uh, I like to use a lot of, of angle here. I like to get this going and I like to lean this back quite a bit to make sure that all of this is going behind this rod. I don't want any of it running out in front of it. And that's kind of common. It'll, it'll kind of squirrel around here and, and the flux will try to run out in front of your rod. At that point in time, uh, you got to stop, do something, make an adjustment, keep on going. Uh, and sometimes it'll spatter. That's okay because uh, you can clean that off easy enough. And then the other thing that we do is we run a lot of multiple pass welds where we're training ourselves to blend beads. Same height, same width. Uh, attack the toe of the previous weld, build beads up. It's good practice in that um, uh, you can make those straight lines in the horizontal position and then actually when we get to a groove weld in the horizontal position it's pretty much the same thing. You're running straight lines, same height, same width. You want to stack those up. So, um, the, you know, let me compare a 6013 to a 6010. 6013 runs on any polarity. Uh, 6010 has high cellulose sodium. It only runs on DCEP. It's what it's designed to run on, DCEP. It's a very thin electrode. If I held these two up, you can see a slight difference in diameter. Uh, and then we've got, uh, let's go with the 7018. Now all of these are the same size in the 532 but you'll see a slight difference in the diameter on the outside and that has to do with what's in the flux. 7018 designed for alternating current and DCEP or reverse polarity has about 25% iron powder in it. We consider that to be a fill freeze type of electrode as well, meaning we can weld out of position. Flat, horizontal, overhead, vertical, but vertical up with 7018. I've also tried to experiment a little bit and run 6013 uphill. I don't care for it. It's just too fluid. If it's a small non-critical part, I'll position it in the horizontal flat. 
and I will run it slightly downhill by slightly downhill. I mean, maybe, oh, 45 degrees max. I don't really like running it straight downhill. Uh, anyway, we want, to, uh, we want to help the viewer out and demonstrate this weld. I don't know if they were having trouble with um, the flux running around. The other thing that we could mention at this point would be arc blow. I don't know, uh, some of you viewers may have run into a situation where you're welding along and everything's going great. And then all of a sudden your arc just starts wandering and it starts spitting and the electrode fingernails and you're going, wow, what am I doing wrong? And you're really not doing anything wrong. It's a condition called arc blow. It happens in direct current welding. Two ways to get rid of it. Uh, move your ground or switch to AC. Now on this particular machine, I cannot switch to AC. So as I, as I start out, I expect my weld to be okay. As I get toward the end of this, uh, in the last third or even the last fourth of this weld, I may see a condition where it turns into an arc blow situation. Uh, if it does, I'm not gonna worry about it and we'll just point it out that that's, that's something that's fairly common. So let me get my sleeves and safety glasses on. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm getting ready to weld this again, 5.30 seconds, 60.13. Uh, when I start, uh, I mentioned that I wanna, I wanna drag this in here. But when I start, I'm gonna start with just a little bit of a long arc so that I'm, I'm trying to get this arc force to get this slag back away from my pool. And then I wanna set this in here. And you may see me rolling around doing something. I am, I am trying to get this slag back away from the pool and I'm watching the width. And again, this is so fluid that it, this is like one of those stainless welds or 7018 or something. You're not really gonna see the ripple pattern. And so I'm, I'm kind of watching about a 3 16 behind the rod and there'll be a little ridge and it'll be shaking. And that's kind of where the pool's starting to solidify. So if you see me start out over here and then all of a sudden lean my rod over, that's what I'm trying to do. I, I just wanna hold I want to hold an arc where this is touching both sides at the same time. And you may even see me take one hand off and stand here like I don't care and I'm being lazy and I, it's just more comfortable. Now, if I get down here to the end and it starts to arc blow, then I may put my hand back on here and try to manipulate the arc. So, uh, here we go. I'm holding a little bit of pressure here, um, basically to the amount that I can just feel the rod dragging in the groove here in the fillet weld. I'm not pushing on it by any means, definitely not gouging it. I do see a little line of flux about eighth inch away from the rod, that's what I want. And by travel speed, I'm trying to keep the same width. I might run out of rod before I get to the very end. I don't know. Okay, right there. Right at the very end, about the last half inch or so, all of a sudden we've got a big arc and it kind of blew out a little bit. That's what I was talking about, about arc blow. And I attempted to bring the rod out here to the very end and then backfill it just a little bit. Now, if I wanted to totally avoid that, which I do a lot, and a lot of people ask me, boy, that looks funny. Your bead stopped right here and you restarted over here on the edge and now you've got a little button right there. Yeah, you're right. I do that purposely because I don't want that arc blow thing out here on the very end. I try to avoid it. I do that in spray welding with gas metal arc welding. I do it sometimes in short arc. If I'm working on a project, I will purposely just break it in half. Sometimes I'll even measure it so it's exactly in the middle just to show that, you know, the bead came from two directions and the corners are blended in. So let me clean this up. I have, a, I have a little, I don't have very much spatter on the start of this weld. I have a fair amount down here where I ended the weld. And I kind of expected that. I did expect to see the arc blow. 
I never want to see it, but I'm, I'm glad it happened so that that's part of our discussion here. So if the viewer was having trouble with some of the issues, again, I don't know the full details. I know that they requested to see a 530 second, uh, 6013, but I don't know the particulars of why if, if he was having trouble. Again, I ran this at a 140 amps. That's fairly aggressive. Uh, I'm going to go chip this off and wire brush it, and I'll be right back. Okay, this was our 530 second 6013 demonstration on a fillet weld. Um, this is the original weld, uh, and I believe on film, I got right down to about right in here, and we had this arc blow condition where it kind of blew up a little bit and the arc wandered. I did have some some BBs down here, some buckshot that kind of fell out on the plate, and I just I lightly sanded them off. They came off. They're unsightly. I don't like to leave them for finish work. And I didn't really get to fill my crater in like I normally do, but uh, you know, again, if I was doing something where it was critical for aesthetics or something, I would probably come in here, strike an arc, take a sander, blend it back. Now, off camera, I went ahead and did a couple of things. Uh, again, the viewer commented on just, I believe it was just a 530 second 6013, but off camera, I went ahead and I ran a three pass weld because I believe I mentioned that we do this a lot for training purposes. Uh, I ran one bead in here in the original fillet and I ran one down on the toe of that weld and I stopped and then I ran one up here. And our here for what we do, always want to keep this profile in there about a 45 degree. We don't want unequal leg fillet welds and this is pre-training us to do critical groove welds with like low hydrogen electrodes. So um, again, I didn't run it all the way down. I didn't get into the, the arc blow thing. You'll notice this weld is fairly small. This one flattened out a little bit more. I didn't go cool this off in between. I just ran them bang, bang, bang. Now, had I done a succession of beads, 3 16th material when I got done, I need to go cool this off because now it's just saturated with heat and that's, you don't want to keep welding too hot. I also ran a, a lap weld here and uh, I'm, not, I'm not happy with it in the fact that um, it, I don't think I would have been able to cool this off to what I really wanted to do with it to make this profile. I went ahead and ran it at the 140 but it's to me it's too big of a rod it's it's either trying to grab and go over the top and blend it in or it's it's just kind of falling around i noticed i had some movement issues there now one thing to note those of you that do work on with 6013 7014 7024 i do want to show you a little trick here that i did um, you know what do you do with your old rod stubs well i use them and i use them this way let's say that i want to make this weld here uh, and I want this to kind of blend in. There's a trick that uh, a guy taught me a long time ago. Shout out to Noel Putnam. Noel, if you're still around, I appreciate your tips and craftsmanship. Noel taught me this trick with 7014, 7024, and he also showed me how to use a burn bar for doing critical cutting. Uh, hopefully we'll get to do a demonstration on that one of these days. I'll take this rod right here, and I'll kind of lean it right where I'm gonna start and I'll strike the arc and purposely weld into this flux. It's like, a, it's like a dam, it's like a heat sink. It'll blend this right here and then you just take off welding. If this is stuck to it, so what? You're gonna, it just breaks off real quick. And you may have a little bit of a, a material over, overlapping, but at least it's fused. You can come back and sand it and finish it, you're done. Versus maybe missing your start, uh, leaving a small, uh, part of lack of fusion or something that happened on the start or you sagging way too much material over the tip here. Again, just hold that up there, strike against it. You know, if it falls off, that's fine. You can leave it stuck to it, make your weld, come back, break this off and sand it. So to the viewer that commented, you know, again, here's the original weld and I hope this helped you out. Um, uh, 6013 is a good, good rod to run. Uh, 60,000 pound tensile strength runs on any polarity. Fun to run, fun to train with. So I hope this, I hope this helped and I hope this answered your question. 
Appreciate you watching today. I'm Bob Moffitt with Weld.com. Make sure you subscribe to the videos. We'll try to have new videos every Monday. Thank you.